Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Wizards has responded to the community. Wizards has put out their well stream about uh, the summary about this change into them uh, taking over the Commander format. The Rules Committee now basically being disbanded or uh, kind of put into a different position within the Watsi structure now, kind of. Let's talk about all this. Let's jump into it, talk about the implications, and talk about the power bracket system that they have unveiled, or at least the kind of beginnings of it. So, a big thank you to uh, Merit123 on uh, the Reddit, uh, the EDH Reddit, uh, basically, putting this together. The summary about it, I did watch it, but yeah, this summary really helps things out, and it's a very good summary. Uh, first up, we all, Watsi, and the Rules Committee reached this conclusion together. Is something that they definitely emphasized. Again, like I talked about yesterday, it is, in my opinion, disappointing that this is the reality that we live in. Again, I've called this like the darkest timeline. Community fans out there, yeah. Ba making it so that, you know, Wizards is in charge of Commander. Something many of us in the community never wanted. That being said, you can't blame the RC for, you know, making this decision because... Hey, lives are getting threatened. People are getting harassed online. It's absolutely terrible. People online can be terrible sometimes. So, reaching the conclusion together, I definitely do believe that that did happen. Again, we have talked about, you know, Olivia and Jim both saying, like, that's something they never really wanted. But it is something that's kind of like the reality of the situation. And, yeah, it just seems like that was their only choice, really. Uh, they are taking precautions to ensure the safety of RC members. That's great. Again, I think having... A company that has, obviously, the resources that Wizards Hasbro does, yeah, uh, it's going to be something where, yeah, they can take those, you know, threats of violence incredibly seriously, or not that they weren't being taken seriously before, but they can actually give them to the right legal channels and, yeah, ensure the safety of the RC members uh, at events and also online more so than they have been. Next up, they still wanted to community, keep it a community-driven format. I'll believe it when I see it. So, uh, again, like, the the problem is that with this, Commander has been a community-driven format, the basically, like, only real, like, you know, major community-driven format out there, and it's been that way since the start of the format, the problem being that now that Wizards has control, they are never going to be giving it up. And again, their version of what a quote-unquote community-driven format is, in my opinion, is probably going to differ from what our version has been. And we'll talk about when it comes to decisions, when it comes to bans, when it comes to, I keep saying the phrase wrong, but the fox is in the hen house now. Yeah, basically, they are the ones who are designing the cards, and they're also the ones saying, yeah, that's fine for Commander. Yeah, we're not going to ban it because we designed it, obviously, so it's completely fine. So yeah, I am really hoping to be proven wrong on this, that they do keep it very community-focused, but when it comes to them making the final decisions on things, I highly doubt they're ever going to make any decisions that are like, well, we made a mistake on that. We admit that right away, and we're going to change that right away. We're going to ban that card, even though it's going to take away from some money that we might have gained from the card. That was a mistake. Next up, Gavin plans to establish a committee similar to Popper, Format Panel, RC, and CAG members are likely members. Comment below and let me know any of you out there play Popper and how the Popper format panel has been. I have heard good things about how Popper is run so far, so I'm hoping that it is, again, in a positive light like that is. So that would be great. RC and CAG members are likely members. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so that 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 is kind of what I expected, that the RC would still be basically consulted on things. It's not like they're just completely out unless they want to be out of all this. But yeah, having them give their opinions on things, of course, is great. The... Kind of problem, again, is that they want to keep it a community-driven format. The people making the actual decisions, uh, I would assume, are probably still WotC employees that are on the design team. So, again, like, you have, like, the RC kind of taking on now, like, a CAG role, kind of, is what I'm thinking that they're going to be doing, right? Where they're, like, they're giving their input, they're giving their opinions. But, again, as we saw with the last decision from the Rules Committee, the CAG was not involved. So, again, are we going to get to that point where the CAG is not involved and uh i mean the cag being the rules committee now is not involved with those kinds of decisions so we shall see again like how much actual say do the rules committee members and the cag members have and also i think the problem with this now is 
I would assume they're all going to have to sign NDAs. I mean, they already had certain NDAs with Wizards, but, like, are they going to have to sign NDAs where it's, like, you can't discuss, like, you know, your, you know, your take on a certain thing? If they ban or unban a card, it has to be kind of, like, an amorphous decision that no one knows who, you know, thought of this way or thought of that way. And basically, it's, like, a united front, like, hey, like, no, it's just banned. You know, this new card or just is unbanned or whatever. Or, no, we're not choosing to ban this card even though you might think certain people in the rules committee or CAG or, you know, whatever this new group is called would, you know, want to voice their opinion and be like, Hey, I, I was trying to push for this, but we didn't like, are there going to be NDAs at this sign? They're like, no, you can't share your opinion on that because we have to have a complete united front to show that, you know, like, Oh yeah, everyone just agrees that this should not be banned or whatnot. So I'm really hoping that again, it is community driven. I hope you've proven wrong with my stance that I don't think that they are going to be near this community driven as many would want because again, it is under Wizards. But again, I, there is some hope because I, I have heard some good things about the way that Popper is run. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. Moving on. Aaron addresses the worries about profit-driven actions. No, really! I'm also here for the love of the game, like the RC. Yes, Hasbro wants things. Yes, my bosses wants things. I have a lot of freedom to do what I think is best. Our goal is to make things last forever. Keeping the community happy is our way to make money. Yes and no. There are definitely times where, you know, Wizards does make decisions that, you know, make money and do not make the community happy. There are plenty of examples of that in the past that we have seen. And again, the rules committee was kind of like a slight barrier that we had to maybe be able to push back on that. Now there is no barrier to push back on that with it being under Watsi. So again, I hope to be proven wrong on this, but and you basically just gave the keys to the kingdom over to Wizards at this point, where they are the ones who now print the cards and decide whether or not, like, oh, no, that's fine for the format. No, we didn't make a mistake on that. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <sighs> yeah, power creep, things that are terrible for the format. But they're like, no, it's not a big deal. And we'll talk about kind of how this kind of plays into the power bracket system here in a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, keep the community happy is a way to make money. Yes, but, uh, again, like... When it comes to them keeping the community happy, like, did some of their printings over the past couple of years keep the community happy with, like, you know, Dockside Extortionist, Jeweled Lotus, did that make community happy? No, maybe not. So we shall see again if we get more of those types of cards. And again, no barriers to stop those cards from staying in the format. Next up, they want to wait until the panel is established to talk about the ban list. I think that is a very good idea. I think that is a great idea overall, and again, I hope that that is one where, again, it's not like they are unbanning cards, although when they talked about, you know, the actual ban list on the uh, the conversation, they did mention, like, you know, like, oh, we might unban some. Like, so I'm hoping that, again, like, yes, establish the panel, take the time to actually do this correctly, and don't make just quick decisions after this just to go willy-nilly and, you know, really change things up and cause things further into chaos. I think a little bit of stability right now would be great. You know, let things settle. And then, sure, make some adjustments as needed. Moving on. Beyond the initial ban list changes, they don't want to make changes too often. I think that is a good idea. Again, like, I do think that you do need to be reactive. H here's the problem again. They do need to be reactive, again, when a problem does occur from a set. That's like, again, like, if another Nadu is printed, you need to be like, oh, yeah, that probably should be banned right away, essentially, which Nadu was banned Pretty quickly compared to most bannings we've had, but again, Nadu could have been banned from day one most likely because, yeah, it was seen as a problem right away by many. That being said, again, if you are making, uh, and let's go to the next one, here we go, quarterly ban list updates similar to the rules committee, it won't follow the BNR of other formats, that's good. It shouldn't follow the BNR of other formats, I don't think, but yeah, quarterly is usually good enough for Commander. Again, a format that is non-rotating, a format that is eternal, a format that doesn't need big shakeups at all, and we should not see big shakeups, you know, for the stability of it. I mean, all the time is what I'm saying on that one. But yeah, quarterly bandless updates. But still, of course, if you do have like an emergency situation, like a loot tree gets printed and they're like, yeah, this wasn't ever intended for Commander, so it's just an insta ban right away. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So I do hope, again, that, yeah, this does seem promising where, okay, we have... Similar approach to the RC. We're going to have banless updates in this way. But yeah, I think the problem is that we're not going to see like those discussions around bans necessarily right away on certain cards. That like, okay, yeah, the set came out. Oh, there's this card in it. Hmm, should that be banned? I don't know. I don't think we're going to see those discussions that much because, again, like the company that's printing the cards is being like, yeah, we wouldn't print it if we didn't think it was okay for Commander. Yeah. So we shall see. Okay, next up, we'll get further into detail on this here in a little bit because I've got, like, the whole graph and everything like that. 
and they have the actual cards laid out. They did go over the power brackets. Uh, tier 1 Swords, Tier 2 Thalia, Tier 3 Death Magistrate, Tier 4 Armageddon. Basically, they've got like high power down to low power. It's going to be an interesting scale. And again, we'll get further into this. I've got like a little chart to show off. So there you go. Handy dandy. And talk about my opinion on this. Uh, but yeah, it, it's um, it, it's interesting to say the least. Uh, Aaron Forsyth used to play Armageddon. Yeah, that, that's not surprising at all from a competitive player. <laughs> that like, oh yeah, why can't I just play this card? Oh, um, because we don't want to sit here for 20 minutes rebuilding the board. Okay, moving on. Uh, they aren't trying to replace rule zero. They're trying to make it easier. And not that you can't play Armageddon, but that's like a that's a CEDH card. And obviously it's tier four. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Uh, tier four, I think this is the exact opposite. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. I think it's in reverse. Anyways, moving on. At least one person from the CEDH community will be part of the panel. Watsi will still focus on casual commander. I mean, I think that's a very good thing. Uh, I do think that's probably pretty apparent. I, I assume, again, if Jim wants to be on that, I assume they're going to keep Jim for, for that. So yeah, Jim would be the CEDH person. Maybe they'll have someone else. Uh, but again, I say at least one, they could have more obviously, but yeah, the focus is casual commander. CDH is a different beast entirely because it's like, yeah, you wouldn't really have like a tier system because you wouldn't have that kind of discussion at all. Like you wouldn't have power brackets for CDH. You're like, well, I'm playing a power level one CDH deck. It's like, no, you're all playing the highest power level because you're playing CDH. You're trying to all win as quickly as possible. That That's the name of the game for CDH, not the name of the game for casual commander. No separate ban list. Brackets already do that job. Yes and no, in my opinion, on this one. Like, I think that's a bit naive. In fact, I think the entire bracket system is a bit naive. Um, yeah, they aren't trying to replace Rule Zero. They're trying to make it easier. Like, I understand that. But also, I do think that the bracket system can be a good thing. But it also can cause some problems. And yeah, again, that's kind of just... We'll get to that once I get to the actual like image so we can talk about that. And the fourth bracket will be cards that you really see in pre-cons. Uh, Soul Ring isn't going anywhere. Soul Ring is bracket zero, so to say. This is an interesting thing where it's like, yeah, I mean, Soul Ring is probably a, you know, incredibly one of the most powerful cards of the format. It is a power nine card in Commander, really. And saying that it's like, you know, nothing is, is pretty interesting, but there you go. Uh, point system similar to Canlander is too complex and competitive for Commander. Casual Commander, uh, I mean maybe but again like if you are putting out this resource again you're like i'm assuming they're putting out like a website where you basically paste your deck list in and then it tells you what level that is like okay like is this a one two three four so if you have that couldn't you just paste your deck list in for again like the point system and it for those of you who don't know canadian highlander again they have a point system basically where i think you can up to is it up to 10 points for a deck basically but like most cards are zeros and then cards i think go all the way up to eight points there's a couple that are or one, at least one that's eight points but yeah basically you can only have a certain number of points in your deck and so like okay if you need to like adjust some cards because you go over them at points amount then there you go i personally think that actually a point system wouldn't be too bad but uh, again like uh, it is a, a bit complex i guess for casual players to understand but like again if you're having this resource having this website where you're like, just paste your deck list in and we'll explain to you again with some good user experience, you know, okay, yeah, you paste your list in. Cool, here's why your deck has 12 points in it because you have this, this, and this card. You need to, you know, reduce your deck down to this amount of points to be within this, you know, power level of a deck, this power level of a deck. And again, the, the thing with all of this is that like the bracket system doesn't take into account like synergies, like, and I don't know how they would ever do that. But, uh, but yeah, again, it is trying to simplify something that is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to simplify. I do think a point system might be better, but, uh, yeah, I could be pretty wrong on that. Brawl and Arena already separates decks in four categories. I think Brawl and Arena is a very different beast. It's a lot less cards, and it's a one-on-one -on -one format, much more simple. But, yeah, I mean, everyone out there, anyone who plays Brawl, please let me know in the comments below what your opinion on their categories are. Uh, Jewel Lotus, Arcane Signet, Dockside were mistakes. Cards that are recently banned are the kinds of cards they wouldn't want to make today. They want to reduce ubiquitiness going forward. Okay. So this to me says that they are never going to. And again, like literally, if they literally say Jewel Lotus and Dockside are mistakes, I don't see how they can unban them. And again, here's the weird thing. Like Arcane Signet is a different beast, I guess, because like that's like that's not overpowered. That's just like auto include that's kind of the difference between these three cards like jewel lotus is non auto include index dockside kind of is 
But like Arcane Sand is not overpowered. It's just basically an auto include. So, but saying Jewel Lotus and Dockside are mistakes, it would be very difficult for them to be like, they're mistakes, but you know what? Unban them because Player Spell played those cards. And we want to make more money when we print them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to be doing with that because they didn't mention again, like, I mean, Mana Crypt was a mistake, but a mistake from a long time ago. Or again, it's like maybe fine for other formats, I guess. I don't know, Legacy and Vintage, whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, um, I, I think it's probably, is it banned? In, in, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, they uh, they did specify this, but yeah, they didn't mention Naughty was, I think they actually mentioned Naughty was a mistake too. But basically, again, uh, they are banned recently. They wouldn't make them today. I mean, I, I'm i just going to point to this when they make a card that's like Dockside level of crazy in the next couple of years, so or next year even. So, reduce Ubiquitous going forward. I think that is a good thing. Again, like, less Arcane Signet type cards. You're like, okay, like, I... Not you have to include it, but, like, it's it's basically an auto-include. It's better than nearly every other mana rock around its same level, essentially. So, like, yeah, it's, it's hard to argue against including in any kind of a non-green deck. Okay, they're discussing implementing more digital tools, e.g. into your deck list, and it tells you your bracket. That's exactly what, I mean, I assumed with this entire thing, and I do think that is a, it's a good thing hypothetically, but I don't know if it's a good thing in practice, because, uh, I mean, I'm gonna kind of basically say that, like, at, at like a command fest kind of thing, that, I mean, when it comes to, like, this actual, like, you know, brackets and stuff like that, it really applies more to LGSs and, you know, Command Fest and, like, playing in public versus playing at home with your friends that you, you know, you know what their decks are. Kind of, once you're in a play group, you know, like, what decks are, you know, what kind of, like, the assumptions are, you know what, like, level around everyone is, you know kind of how things go with those groups and kind of what decks you should be bringing to the table. This kind of, to me, and I'm not saying everyone's going to do this, it's definitely not, like, but there are going to be some people who, like, this can be, like, an excuse to kind of pub stomp in a way, potentially, like, in a weird way, because you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go play with the ones, and, and like, let's just say, okay, for, for me, like, a budget player, I'm a budget player, all right, I hate to say it, but, like, a lot of the cards, I mean, I don't hate to say it, but, like, uh, I can't build a tier four deck, because, like, uh, tier four cards are most likely not budget friendly at all, I mean, I guess that's not true, because, like, stacks pieces, there are a good amount of, like, destroy all lands. Okay, so that's not true. But, yeah, I'm not playing CDH, so I'm not going to play stacks pieces anyways. But, again, when it comes to, like, the other side, there's, like, there's a weird dividing line between, like, these bracket cards where it's, like, stacks pieces, but also, like, tutors. We'll talk about this here in a little bit. Like, most of my decks are going to be a one or a two most likely, I would assume, just based on the card pool that I have to select from. That does not mean that their power level is actually that. When it comes to a deck that I've done an episode on where I talk about, make sure you check it out at some point, like, a deck I will never play ever again, not ever again, I think I said, but basically, like, a deck I don't play anymore, I rarely play. It's like one of those, like, if everyone agrees to play, like, their highest power deck, then I will pull it out. But it's a deck that when I first started playing Commander, I made this incredibly synergistic deck, my Joyra deck, Joyra Artifacts and its Artifacts Storm, basically, I didn't realize just kind of, well, yeah, just because you can build it, and because it's budget, doesn't mean that it's a necessarily not not even a fair deck to bring to the table, but one that you really should actually even bring to the table. If I threw that Joyra deck into their digital tool, I can guarantee you it is probably a one, maybe a two at the very most. Again, because the cards that are included in it, but it's not taking into account those synergies. This is a deck that is probably more like an eight on the power scale, essentially. It can win as early as turn three. And if you don't stop it, it's going to win like turn four, most likely turn four, turn five, maybe at the most. But it is incredibly fast. It's incredibly annoying to play against because it is me sitting at the table playing for 20 minutes in a turn and storming off with artifacts. And again, kind of like Nadu. Nadu can be very similar to that. It's banned now, but like Nadu is probably similar to that where it's like, oh, okay. You have a deck with like a, uh, maybe some like twos in it, I would assume. But like, yeah, you've got Shuko is like the scariest thing in that deck. Okay. And all of a sudden you're just storming off again with it's not taking into account synergies. It's taking into account like, oh, powerful cards. And powerful cards do not make it a power level. Like, just because you have a Vampiric Tutor in your deck does not mean that your deck is, oh my gosh, the most powerful thing in the world. I think it, like, oversimplifies it to the point where there's going to be confusion on this. And, like, again, at a Command Fest, if you're like, yeah, we'll have, okay, this is the ones over here. You can pull up your entire deck list and be like, okay, everyone, here's proof that my deck is a one. Let's all sit down and play together. You're playing with a pre-con, and I'm playing with Joyra Artifact Storm that is incredibly tuned, but is not utilizing any cards outside of, you know, Tier 1. It doesn't matter if it's any cards outside of Tier 1. You're going to win basically every time. 
so I do think that it does oversimplify things. And I do hope, again, with this kind of digital tool, that they have a lot of, again, a good user experience where it teaches you while you're putting things in and makes it very, very clear that it's like, hey, this is like our recommended tier level based on the power levels that we are determining for cards individually in your deck. Not necessarily the synergies of how this deck works. This deck could be a lot more powerful than that. And just understanding that and being able to adjust. But when you have especially newer players who might not understand this, again, like if you had this tool for me back years and years and years ago and I built that Jory deck and I threw it in there and I went to a Command Fest, I'd be like, why are you all upset? I just played my Tier 1 deck against your Tier 2 decks and that seems unfair to me, but I'm, I'm winning. I'm beating you all a lot with this deck even though I'm a Tier 1. How can you be upset with me for playing a, a Tier 1 deck at all in any circumstance? So, uh, again, like they need to make sure that they're... Again, simplifying it, yes, but also in a way that makes sense and in a way that isn't going to cause issues. We shall see. They want to release the first Brackets article before MagicCon Las Vegas, and that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, this is for, again, LGSs. This is for, you know, playing in public. This is for Command Fest, Magic Cons. This is for that. This power tier system is for that. It is not really for home. And, like, that's kind of like what my player was discussing, basically. It's like, oh, like, yeah, we're not going to be, like, adjusting our decks to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, you've got a Vampiric Tutor in your deck. You need to take that out now because that's a four and I'm playing with a one. N no, you, you kind of know like what your power levels really are. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Okay. The committee will be in the range of 10 to 12, 10 to 20 people. There are also 10 commander designers working in WotC. Okay. And this is where I would like some, I would like some, uh, yeah, like specificity once we get this done. Once we get, once we get the actual committee set up, like, what in the world is going on with this? Like, again, like, does the final decision land on Watsi? I would assume it does. It's not just going to be like a, hey, we've got 30 people. Okay, all right, everyone votes. And, like, you've got, like, 20 community members voting to, like, the 10 Watsi so they can kind of overrule them and get something banned, like, while it's coming out for the people who actually just designed the card. I doubt they're going to allow that. So, again, is it more so, like, we have the 10 commander designers working in Watsi, and then we've got these other 10 to 20 people that kind of act more like the CAG, the Commander Advisory Group, essentially, off to the side that can give their opinions. But again, at the end of the day, the decision lies on the people within WotC. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what it's going to be. But again, I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping, again, they're like, yeah, we want this to be community-driven. This is a group effort. We've got our designers in here, uh, which I don't think should be in the decision process, but that's just, that's just me. But also, we've got the people outside of the designers, and again, they can actually make an impact, and we can make it so that their voices are stronger, because they're from the actual community. We've got our designers in eternal. They're not tied to number four. They can make a fifth bracket for CDH. Interesting. And, and I do I do think that kind of needs to be a thing, personally, but we shall see. Uh, it is undecided whether the committee will be anonymous. At least some names will be known. And that is something where it's like, that is kind of sad that that needs to be said. But yeah, I don't blame people in the community for or the committee for being anonymous because again, of what happened with this, which is ridiculous and people threatening people. Absolutely terrible. I don't blame it for being anonymous. I do think that is, it is somewhat, I'm not going to say they have to be non-anonymous because not anonymous public. Because again, like I would not want that type of vitriol and hate, uh, you know, spewed at me uh, and, and threats. But basically... The problem with it being anonymous, though, is that, like, now you just have, like, a shadowy figure making decisions, and it's, like, there it, li it takes away accountability. It takes away accountability for, like, who is making that decision? Is this a Watsi decision? Is this a people from that community decision? Who's on that panel even? Like, how do we know that we can trust the decisions that are being made? But, again, I, I think, like, at some point, it does have to be that some people are anonymous on that because, again, people, like, don't want their lives threatened for this, which is completely understandable. So, yeah, it's pretty sad that it has to be that way, potentially, but, like, I understand it. Although, again, it does kind of take away some of the credence to decisions that are going to be made with this. They can divide combos in different brackets. Thoracle combos, bracket four, Sanguine Bond, Exquisite Blood, bracket three, etc. I do think that it needs to be laid out in that way, too, because, yeah, I mean, again, like, certain cards, like Pilly Pala... Or Pilly, what is it? Pilly Pilly? Whatever the one is, the, the little like scarecrow dude that untaps, like is a garbage card for the vast majority of decks out there if it's not using a combo. But like every deck that utilizes it is using a combo. That being said, like, so yeah, like it just by itself, its power level is like a one, but uh, it also, or one, it's a four, whatever it is on, on the reversal. But yeah, it, it's the lowest level. 
but essentially, you know, like, yeah, if, if you put like this plus this, then yeah, sure, then that is, you know, a, a higher one because it is a combo. So that's interesting. Uh, Gavin reads Reddit a lot. So do I. There you go. So <laughs> an interesting, again, just, um, again, summary, uh, interesting kind of points that they brought up. Again, I don't, I understand the decision that was made. I don't necessarily like the decision that was made because I never want Wizards to be in control of Commander. I don't think it's a good thing for the format overall. I do, again, the, I think the main thing is they still want to keep it a community-driven format. Again, I will believe it when I see it. I hope that that is the case because that is the, you know, fear that, you know, from the community that if Wizards gets control, I mean, again, we're, the community is never going to control back ever again. This is never going to go the other way, which is why this is just like a finality decision where they have control. It's never getting back in the community's hands. So I hope that at least it's a good faith effort by Wizards to be like, hey, you know, we're going to have all these people from the community helping make these decisions. Again, they've got, I would hope, more power than the actual designers themselves to make decisions for the format, though I doubt that is going to be the case. Again, when it comes to, you know, the profit-driven actions, I do think that that is the major concern where they're going to print things. Again, they... Josh Lee Kwai from the Commander Advisor Group, you know, saw, I, I, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong this, but I believe Josh said this, that Jewel Lotus, like, he was he show, he got shown Jewel Lotus, he had an NDA, you know, a year before it came out, and he, like, wrote to them, like, do not print this. And Wizards, knowing from, I'm sure others out there, too, that had, you know, the NDA signed from that and saw that card that said, don't print this, including Josh, a, you know, major voice in the community, they still printed it because of profits. Because, yeah, we want a Black Lotus, but for Commander, look what we can do. Look all these packs selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's a profit-driven action, and that is something that they are deciding to do for, for money. Like, not to improve the game, but for money. Like, that's just literally what it is. That is not... I, I Yeah. Okay. Let's move into, again, these power brackets, these tiers, and talk about how they're laid out, again, like what benefits they could potentially have, and again, like de dig deeper into what potential problems they could cause. Again, I, I in a perfect world, you could just have like a, like, you know, a, a, you know, you paste this in and you get exactly what your power level is. I think it's a bit unrealistic to think that that would actually work in the pristine way, but again, if you do build it in the right way and you do caution players to be like, hey, like this is just general, this is just based on the individual cards in there, it's not based on synergies for the deck, if things are explained properly, hopefully that can help alleviate some uh, frustration, confusion, etc. Okay, so this was the image that they showed off. This is just, I believe, like their initial concept. It's obviously not finalized <laughs> at all. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of like the base that they're working off of. And they are willing to change it moving forward. But see, so yeah, if you have any ideas, I'm sure send it to them. Uh, but yeah, basically, they have a commander, pow commander power bracket uh, all the way up from four, which is high power. Cards only go in the highest power decks down to one, which is low power cards can easily go in any deck. And they put examples of each in here and I'll kind of actually go through and talk about each of those individual examples and kind of what they're saying about this in general. And then talk about, you know, some edge case thing that they talked about as well. But again, I do think again, conceptually, it's a very, it's a very good idea that could, you know, it could have a very good impact, but also it can be a very bad idea just because of the implications of players either not understanding or manipulating the system and being like, well, I'm sitting at this table because this is tier one and here's my list. I can show you a picture of it. And uh, Wizards said it's a tier one and I'm at Command Fest playing my Joyra Artifact Storm deck, which is tier one. And now I'm just dominating all the tables and everyone's miserable. Yay! But yeah, let's start off at four, which is high power. And the first card that sh they showed off in this one is Vampiric Tutor. An instant for a single black mana, search life for a card, shuffle your library for that card on top, but you lose two life. Yeah, one of the best tutors uh, in the entire format, one of the best tutors in Magic. <laughs> it's a one mana instant speed. Go get whatever you want. Oh no, you lose 1 20th of your life in Commander. That is nothing at all. And uh, yeah, put it on top of your library. So it's not directly to hand, but still incredibly good, obviously, right before you turn. You're like, oh yeah, I'll just go get the best card in my deck, put it on top of my library, and there you go. See, I, I, I do find it interesting that they basically kind of split out the first couple are like a tutor example, and then a another kind of example, which... Um, yeah, I think other players out there are going to be like, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of think that they should have a separate, they should have a separate, like, if you're playing this card, it's CDH, basically. <laughs> like, I do think that they should kind of have that, because it kind of makes these power tiers a bit weird in a way, because it kind of says that CDH and, command and casual are, like, the exact same format, and they're 
basically not, in my opinion, and you shouldn't be playing even like a tier 3 CDH deck against a tier 3 non-CDH deck, but we'll talk about that more here in a little bit. Another high power card at tier 4, Armageddon, destroy all land, sorcerer for 4 mana. Yeah, uh, mass land destruction is a big no-no in Commander. It is something that, uh, for casual Commander, I should say again, is completely allowed in CDH, and that's great. But again, when it comes to casual Commander, you don't do that. And again, there are plenty of decks out there that I played against that definitely play Vampiric Tutor, and that's completely fine, but that is a completely different beast of a Vampiric Tutor in your deck. Again, you could have just a... Uh, I mean, pick a, a Black Commander, a Kuro, Kuro Pit Lord deck. And if you have a Vampiric Tutor in it, apparently then it's a four. Like, if you just, like, that's where the nuance kind of needs to happen, where, like, you take your deck list and you throw it into this thing, and it says, like, your deck's a four. It, it needs to be able to explain things a bit deeper and also be like, yeah, your deck's really not a four. You got, like, a bunch of random stuff in there, but you, like, happen to have a Vampiric Tutor that doesn't turn your deck into a four when you're using, you know a not very tuned deck or whatnot, or even a tuned, tuned deck, but now they an overly really powerful commander versus I'm playing against a CDH deck that has Armageddon. Those are just two different levels of things. So again, like I personally would think that they should have a separate like tier ish for like CDH. Like, yeah, you just put all the stacks pieces up there and be like, yeah, that that's that CDH right there. Uh, there you go. Or like Thoracle combos, that kind of stuff as well. That's CDH. Next up. Third tier, we've got like mid high power. They didn't actually put a name on it, but like I just want to say a name for it because it makes some more sense to me. It's so, like mid high power is the third tier. Personal tutor, a sorcery, a single blue mana. Search light for a sorcery card to deal it, then shuffle another card on top of it. Interesting that they highlighted this one. Uh, again, so an incredibly good tutor, not to the level of vampiric, obviously. It's more specific and it is sorcery speed. It's still just one mana though. It's crazy good. But yeah. It is just one, or it is just for a specific type of card. So they're trying to highlight, I think, okay, here's the differences between these tiers. The top tier, again, Vampiric Tutor, go get whatever you want. Crazy good, powerful tier, like, you know, like one of the top cards in Commander when it comes to power level. And then we go down to Personal Tutor, which is like, okay, it's a very, 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 very good tutor. It's not in the level of Vampiric, though. So we're going down to a little more specificity to it. Also, Draneth Magistrate. <laughs> so again, this is where, like... Uh, a 1-3 Human Wizard for 2 mana. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. This is a CEDH card. You should not play this in casual ever, essentially. And uh, and yeah, this is a card that, uh, again, where I do believe that they should have this a separate list. The, 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 this Armageddon, like those types of cards, just should be, in my opinion, in a completely different bucket. Because that's just like, if you have this in your deck, you're playing CEDH. It's a different game, essentially, from when you sit down at a commander table... You're asking, like, okay, we're playing casual or CDH. You, you shouldn't be sitting down at a commander table and being like, well, my deck's a three, but I've got, like, all CDH cards in it. It's built to win as quickly as possible. It's built with Draneth Magistrate. And other players are like, well, I've got a personal tutor in mind, so my, um, yeah, my Brutoclad deck with a personal tutor in it, um, which is not CDH, uh, is just getting decimated by this Draneth Magistrate, uh, yeah, stack stack, um, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same level. It's, it's a different beast. And I do believe that they do need different things because, yeah, Draft Magistrate is not Armageddon, but uh, it is definitely a CEDH card like Armageddon. Next up, mid low power is tier two. Uh, again, it doesn't have a name technically, but I said mid low power. It makes a little more sense to me. Sorcery for three mana, Fabricate uh, in blue. Search your library for an artifact card to be open your hand, then shelf your library. So again, an incredibly good tutor. Again, it is specific, and this does cost a bit more mana. So yeah, I mean, that does make sense when they lay these out and be like, okay, Vampiric Tutor, yeah, that's crazy powerful when it comes to a tutor. Personal Tutor, very, very, very good. And then Fabricate, yeah, it's good. It's a good tutor. It's not overly efficient when it comes to the mana value compared to other tutors that are crazy, you know, efficient. <laughs> the ones I just mentioned. And it is specific again. So, like, it's going to be interesting to see, like, where, like, Diabolic Tutor see shows up on this list. Like, you know, because that one is, like, four mana, so it's not that efficient when you go get anything. I would assume that's, like, is that tier two or is that tier three? You know, so we shall see. But, yeah, this one is mid-low power. Uh, again, I do think that makes sense. It is interesting that they, they basically showed off, like, okay, like, Tutors are kind of like higher power things to do with your deck. And obviously, stacks pieces are as well. But again, those are two different things. Yeah, do both of those see plays in CDH, you know, tutors and stacks? Yes. But only like one sees play in CDH and not in casual. And that is stacks pieces. That is not tutors. Tutors see play in casual all the time. Next up, 
Also at the tier 2 mentioned was Thalia, Guardian Thraben, a 2-1 human soldier with first strike for 2 mana in white. Non-creature spells cost 1 more to cast. So again, this is a stacks piece somewhat. It is a hate bear, but it is not on the level of a Draneth Magistrate at all. It is a slight inconvenience to the table, but it is not overwhelming inconvenience that players just can't slog through at all. Now, obviously, if you put, like, every hate bear that you can that's in tier 2 in a low-power deck, like, you're probably playing, you know, like, an inefficient CDH deck, kind of. Like, you're playing, like, stacks, but not to the power level. So, like, it is interesting, again, that they have, like, these, like, different tiers. I, I think it's probably pretty fair to put this one in the 2, but, yeah, it is kind of, like, where if you do have just a glut of these hate bear type effects at a power two this is where you need like really good user experience with this website where you're putting the list in like to say like hey yeah this is a two because of all these cards that you have in it but you've got a lot of these kind of two cards you're basically building a stacks deck which many players out there in commander in casual commander don't like to play against so make sure you have that conversation with the table ahead of time and uh don't be surprised if they are not happy with you if you don't have that conversation so there you go. Next up, when it comes to low power, it's interesting again. When it comes to like the power level of cards, um, it, it is interesting. It's like Swords of Power is an incredibly powerful card in Commander, but it does kind of make sense that it is in the low power tier ish because like its removal versus like a tutor versus like a stacks piece, it does make some sense that it is in this low power, even though like compared to like a lot of removal out there, this is crazy good. And I, there is one that like they didn't have on here. Like, what would Cyclonic Rift be? Like, is Cyclonic Rift a, I mean, is Cyclonic Rift a four? Is it a three? At the very least, it would be a two. But yeah, like, it is interesting to see, like, where they put that. Because, yeah, it's easy to be like, yeah, okay, let's just spread out all the tutors. We can figure out where those are at, you know, from efficiency to inefficient tutors. Let's spread all the stacks pieces, which, again, I think should just be in a different thing that's like, hey, CDH, cool. Um, but yeah, being able to say, like, okay, like, Swords of Plowshares, sure, a good example of a one that can fit in any deck, essentially, and you're not going to, like, get hated out by the tail, be like, my gosh, this player's playing Swords of Plowshares. Instant for a single white mana, exile target creature, control against life, equal to its power. Yeah, I mean, a very, very, very good card, but again, one that you're not going to, like, blink an eye on and be like, oh my gosh, you're playing that in your deck? I will not sit down and play with you ever again! Wow! But yeah, where is Cyclonic Rift is kind of an interesting question with this. Uh, Grave Titan's another one they, you know, gave an example to. Like, I mean, every Timmy card is going to be in one power, basically, right? Because it's like, oh my gosh, big scary thing, cool! Yeah, that, that's a low power card. Which is interesting, because again, like, Grave Titan is the same level, you know, power becomes like Colossal Dreadmaw and all those cards, basically. Nothing against Colossal Dreadmaw, but you know. Yeah, like, the worst cards in Magic, no, not that Colossal Dreadmaw fans out there, it's not the worst card in Magic, not saying that, but like, Hill Giant, there you go. Hill Giant is also a card that is in low power, and that is a terrible card. But this one's a 6-6 Giant with Death Touch for 6 mana in black. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create 2-2-2 Black Zombie Creature Shogans. It's a good card. It is not overly powerful, though, when it comes to, like, just comparing this to other things in Commander. Yeah, there's much more powerful things than it. So, yeah, again, a number, another, like, level 1. So, again, like, a, just your basic Timmy deck is going to be, like, a 1. Because you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I just get all these, like, fun big things, throw them all into a deck. I'm not really, like, tutoring things out. I'm not definitely not using stack spaces. And, yeah, it's going to be a 1. But, again... It's not taking into account synergies at all. Like I talked about, you know, with my Joyry deck, like, hey, yeah, I've got all these synergies. I'm storming off incredibly early, and it's just using cards that aren't on a high power level individually, but together the synergy is crazy. And again, that's kind of the the flaw in this entire bracket system where you unless you're explaining it incredibly well, and you know, this again, the user experience has to be really on point the first time that you do this, so they should not be rushing it out if they don't have it ready. But you need to explain to players, like, yeah, um, sure, you just threw one Fabricate in your deck, or you just threw, like, you just happen to have a personal tutor, you threw in your deck, okay? You have all ones, except for this one three, yeah, your deck is probably more so a one. Like, I do think that that needs to take account. It shouldn't just be like, okay, like, you have one powerful card in your deck that does not make the deck you know, a higher tier. But also, again, it should take into account synergies, and I think it's pretty impossible for it to take into account all the synergies in Magic. Again, like, M I think it was MIT that said that Magic's the most complex game of all time and computers can't solve it. So, yeah, trying to actually kind of, quote-unquote, solve it with this system, they need to be honest about the approach. They need to be honest with players about, like, the limitations of the system. Because if not, again, you are going to get those, well, I'm playing a one. Like, I'm playing a one. Like, I'm at a table of ones. Like, what's the problem with me playing 
Joyra, Artifact Storm. It's a one. Yours is a one too. Yeah, and, and also like again, like Chair Tribal is gonna be the exact same as like any kind of, I think they said pre-cons are basically, like, I mean, whatever, like, you know, like a pre-constructed deck, like base level is like a one typically. But yeah, like, okay, like a pre-con deck versus like Artifact Storm versus Chair Tribal. Those are three very, very, very different things. So yeah, I like that they're simplifying it. But again, like you need to simplify it with reason and you need to make sure explaining things properly to players or there's going to be problems with this. Because again, if you're at a Command Fest, you're like, okay, I'm going to go play my one versus other ones. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I clicked on the wrong thing. But yeah, I'm playing my one against other ones. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, this is not balanced at all. We still need to have you, and that's the thing. Like they need to like emphasize, you still need to have those pregame conversations. Like you still need to have those, which is kind of interesting. Uh, when it comes to also other ones, which is interesting, uh, Soul Ring they like made a special exception for it. I'm sure there's gonna be maybe some other cards that are, like special exceptions. Like Soul Ring's a a a uh, bracket tier zero. Okay, you know it's one of the most powerful cards. It's definitely a power nine card. In Commander, again, it's, like, on the level of, like, Vampiric Tutor. Powerful, basically. Like, it is a high-power card. But technically, right, quote-unquote, everyone has access to it. Uh, it's not quite my budget. Again, my budget is, you know, $1 or less. So, it's not quite there yet. But anyways, that being said, like, it is a card that does see play in so many decks out there. So, it would be impossible for them to literally put it in any tier but one. Or, or you know, make its own tier zero. Cool. But, like, it'd be impossible for them to put it in four, or otherwise every single pre-con would be a four, again, if they are saying that, and, and almost every other deck out there that uses it, obviously. Like, if they're saying that one card makes your deck into that tier, which, again, I disagree with. Like, you maybe you need to do, like, an average or something. Like, y you need to do something where, where you are, again, letting people know that, like, oh, you just have, like, one Vampiric Tutor in your Kuro Pitlord deck that does not make it a high-power deck compared to, like, a CDH build. So there you go. But yeah, it is interesting that they're like, yeah, Soul Ring uh, again, and you can argue to the to the end of end of days, you know, if it should be banned or not. I figure it should be banned, but uh, but many players out there do not think that it should be banned, and so therefore, yeah, it does kind of need a special exception with this the way that they're bracketing things out because, yeah, it would just make every deck out there a tier four, like it would just do that because it is a crazy powerful card that is yeah you know, broken basically, so interesting. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day. I do hope that this is the focus. Again, they aren't trying to replace Rule Zero. They're trying to make it easier. Again, that this system that they are using does encourage those conversations still, doesn't oversimplify things to the point where it doesn't make sense really at all. We're like, oh yeah, okay, just put, paste it in there and that's what you got in there. Okay, go sit over those tables because you're this. Again, like you need to have some nuance to it. You need to have some understanding to it. And I understand with newer players, like you need to have something like this potentially where it does say like, hey, just paste your deck list in. This is about where you're at. Cool. But there needs to be, again, a good user experience with that where it teaches players like, hey, just because this is your number doesn't mean that that might be accurate because we're not taking into account the synergies between cards, except for, I guess, like, you know, if they do include combos. But again, like the Joyra deck is not combo. Like, so keep that in mind. It's interesting. It's very interesting. I think the main thing from this entire conversation, I think Wizards needs to be held to this though. They still want to keep it a community driven format. I think it needs to be community driven. It has to be community driven. And my fear, again, the fear of many out there is that again, when Wizards takes control of it, they're never giving it back. And again, that is the community's voice is just gone in it. And I hope that's not the case. I hope that again, when they do establish this, you know, committee, that it isn't just like what the CAG was to the RC. That it's not just like, yeah, okay, give us your opinion. But like, ultimately, at the end of the day, like, our designers make the final decision. I I, I think it's going to be that way. Where unfortunately, like, again, the designers are designing the cards. Like, we just designed this. We clearly think it's fine for Commander. And you're telling us it's not? Yeah, we're printing it anyways. And it is coming out and too bad. I hope that's not the case. I hope I'm wrong on that. Let me know what your thoughts are on all this in the comments below. What are your thoughts and their announcement? What are your thoughts and uh, all these discussion points? And what are your thoughts on the power tier bracket system? And of course, as always, well, uh, hopefully things calm down here in a little bit. <laughs> but of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. 
Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.